Hello again, I am Blunty. On my desk for you today, we have the very first Z270 based motherboard that I've got in for review. It is the MSI Z270 Gaming Pro Carbon, which in the context of how MSI name their boards means it's a full-sized ATX high-end performance feature festooned product aimed specifically at gamers. And the carbon bit is to indicate its sleek stealth black outlook with carbon fiber weave style touches. Now before we dig in deeper, to catch up those of you less soaked in PC tech, the Z270 and H270 motherboards, which we will see their full reveal at CES 2017, are the new chipsets specifically designed to support the feature sets of Intel's newest CPU range from their KB Lake architecture, a small step forward in a refinement and enhancement of the current Skylake CPU range. And the local Aussie MSI peeps were actually rad enough to let me borrow an Intel Core i7 70. 700K, Intel's new top-end i7 flagship. And I will have videos following up this one all about the CPU itself too, so you fresh faces may want to ping that sub button if you're curious on that. But back to the MSI Z270 Gaming Pro Carbon though. On the face of it, it of course looks very much like you'd expect a motherboard to look these days. The I.O. and the heat spreaders are capped with style touches. You've got your 4 DDR4 DIMM slots, and they sit where they always do, and they will support RAM overclocked beyond 3800MHz, and the slots themselves feature MSI's steel armor slot reinforcements that premiered on the PCIe slots in previous generations. And yeah, it's a bit pointless having steel reinforcement on RAM slots, sure, but it's a nice touch of consistency on the styling. I like it. Two of the three PCIe 3.0x16 slots have the armor as well. The third, much less likely to need to carry a heavy video card, remains stealth black. And three PCIe 3.0x1 slots flank them. There's two Turbo M.2 slots, also armored, and one of which comes with a nice little heat spreader with a thermal pad. And as anyone who's been using the new super high-speed NVMe-based M.2 SSDs will know, those little buggers can get pretty sizzly, so this inclusion is yet another nod to smartly pandering for the high-performance components that users of boards at this end of the market will be aspiring to. And the shield and heat spreader help keep super high performance M.2 drives performing at their peak by helping to avoid thermal throttling. And of course, you have your usual selection of SATA ports, fully RAID ready, two USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A and C ports, eight more Gen 1 USB 3.1 ports, six USB 2.0 ports, Intel Gigabit LAN and 7.1 surround ready HD audio, and finally, a DVI-D port and a HDMI 2.0 port should you need to use the CPU's own graphics output. And as is the way of things with MSI's high-end boards, this is built with military-grade components to withstand higher temperature limits and give you a much extended component lifespan. And feeding the high-quality components is power from a 10 plus 1 phase PWM. And lastly, MSI have included what they call Mystic Light, which frankly, if I were in their marketing team, I'd have rallied to call it something much less dorky. <laughs> but Mystic Light it is, and Mystic Light it shall be. Mystic Light is their onboard RGB solution controlling several different lighting zones independently. On the IO Shield, the Platform Control Hub, on the PCB itself, and through the audio circuitry tracks. And so you can control, synchronize, and match your case lighting with the motherboard's own lights, there's a header to connect a standard 5050 12 volt RGB LED strip. Or you can of course just simply choose to black them all out if you're one of those joyless people who want your rig to be all gloomy and dark instead of bright and glorious. Actually, in fact, the Gaming Pro Carbon is quite ideal for that. It's near blackout style combined with the carbon fiber accents, the color neutral steel armor, and lack of almost all color from things like painted logos and such make it a damn fine choice for those kinds of ninja black rigs. Me though, I like the pretty lights. There's a crow reference. And I've got to give MSI props for this. It is very difficult to craft a design that can be both subtle and elegant, perhaps even classy, and still allow for the obnoxiously festive joy of blinky blinky RGB clownery. And MSI have just effing nailed it with this board. Crisp, clean, cool, I love the design. 
And by the way, I'm sure as some of you will be asking that uh, RAM you see throbbing here is Corsair's Vengeance LED RAM I reviewed a little while back. But Corsair have also been teasing for their CES announcements the coming of proper RGB versions of this RAM, which I think would be my personal choice for this rig given its slideshow potential. For your airflow and cooling requirements, there are six four pin fan headers around the board, including one located for an easier time with rear mounted fans. And if you like water cooling, there's actually a specifically dedicated water pump header, which will allow for two amps to be safely pulled through it. Perfect for pumps and precise control. In my test build here, I've popped in Thermaltake's Water 3.0 240 Ring RGB all in one water cooler, which I will talk about more in a separate video and of course we'll touch on it again when we come to the KB Lake CPU video when we start messing with overclocks. But back to the motherboard and on to the software side of things next. Now, not much has changed here for MSI, which is good really because they already have a well-established set of apps which share a very clean design and UI presentation which is easy to read and easy to work with. There's MSI's Dragon Eye, which has little to do with performance, but is pretty cool at the same time. It allows you to overlay YouTube vids and Twitch streams and such over even full screen apps and games. So you can play your games while you watch your favorite streamer on Twitch, for example, or you can play a tutorial or walkthrough for the game you're playing on YouTube. So for those of you who stick with single monitor solutions, this is brilliant. Everything else is performance focused though. MSI X-Boost is a wonderfully visual way to switch between some custom options that will prioritize and tweak different performance aspects depending on what you're doing. The MSI Command Center brings together CPU and memory overclocking and monitoring options as well as temperature and fan speed control with smart auto and custom ramp options. And then there's MSI's gaming app, especially useful if you've also teamed your board with one of MSI's graphics cards. Quickly switching between flat out performance mode and solid mode which keeps temperatures low so your fans stay whispery. You can also bring a whole army of various monitoring elements to on-screen display, although this does have a limited range of compatibility. And you can control your display for various uses too, some fancy stuff with your mouse. And of course, here is where you have control over all that lighting we talked about before, with an extensive range of modes and behaviors all wrapped up in a typically sensible MSI UI design, making it quick and easy to tweak. And rolling all the way back to the raw motherboard now, there's MSI's BIOS interface. Nothing has changed here at all, really. It's still the same interface that I had with my MSI Z97M based Devil's Canyon build. However, that's great news because I really like how MSI do things in their BIOS. It's clean, easy, and you can get some real deep diving done when it comes to super fine control for your overclocking needs. So, final verdict on the MSI Z270 Gaming Pro Carbon. I I really like it. Everything from its basic design language to how it deals with satisfying both flashy and subtle fashion tastes. The build quality is superb, of course. The components are fantastic. The I.O. layout right down to where the pin headers are is all sensible and useful. And the ease of installation and setup is wonderful. It's all just yet another example of so much of what MSI are just so friggin' good at. And speaking personally, I would very happily invite this thing into one of my personal builds. And by the way, keep an eye on MSI's Twitter and other social network media account thingamabobs dude through CES, there's a whole family of Z270 boards coming from MSI. But do stay tuned because coming up next, I will be using this board to take my first poke at the new KB Lake Intel chips, specifically of course the Core i7-7700K CPU. And the keen eye at amongst you may have already noticed this, but yes, I'm running it at 5 GHz overclocked and it sits at around 35 degrees idle with that Thermaltake all-in-one cooler I've got going on there. So once more, if you're not, subscribe. If you are already subscribed, thank you. Do the thumb up thing, leave a comment. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.